Q106.7 weather. Here's your KQNK forecast. Bright sunshine expected today with daytime highs approaching 87. Winds out of the south 10 to 15 miles per hour. Clear skies tonight. Lows dip down to about 60. Bright sunshine expected tomorrow. Highs level off around 87. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times. Friday with daytime highs approaching 88. 79. Chance for storms Saturday. From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm staff meteorologist Laura Lockwood. Right now, 65. Kansas Information Network News. I'm Jen Austin. A former Topeka West High School student convicted of sex crimes has been sentenced. Roxanne Stewart has more. Almost three years after a protest march staged by students over the lack of action, after Grayson Isset assaulted five female students, he stood in front of Judge Mayban Wright and heard his sentence. Three consecutive terms totaling just over six years. Isset, now 20, pleaded guilty to three charges in return for having eight other charges dropped. Isset chose not to make a statement before sentencing, but his attorney he said he is a different person than when he committed those crimes. I'm Roxanne Stewart. Wichita State University is getting an infusion of federal dollars to provide students with top-notch training in audiology medicine. And a $1 million grant will support medical workforce training at WSU's new biomedical training facility. The planning efforts led by the South Central Kansas Economic Development District led to the $1 million grant. The investment will be matched with $1 million in local funds and create 50 jobs. This is Kansas Information Network News. Have you lost CanCare? At healthcare.gov, you can find a low-cost, quality health plan. Do plans cover doctor visits? What about emergency care? And prescriptions? All covered and more. Plus, with the new law, four out of five customers can find a plan for $10 or less per month with financial help. Healthcare.gov is here for you. Enroll today for coverage starting the first of next month. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Smokey the Bear. Then you know why Smokey tells you when he sees you passing through. Remember, please be careful, it's the least that you can do. After 80 years of learning his wildfire prevention tips, Smokey Bear lives within us all. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com and remember only you can prevent wildfires. Brought to you by the USDA Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Good morning, I'm Natalie Hadley with your KQNK News, brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, serving all of your chemical and fertilizer needs. The Kansas Department for Aging and Disability Services Secretary, Laura Howard, announced that the agency has been awarded a five-year substance use prevention grant totaling $6.25 million, broken down to $1.25 million per year, from September 30, 2024 through September 29, 2029. The grant funding is part of the Federal Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration Strategic Prevention Framework Partnerships for Success for States program. This program will provide Kansas the continued opportunity to promote substance use prevention for individuals and families by building and expanding the capacity of local community prevention providers to implement evidence-based programs that are focused on strengthening state and community-level prevention capacity and to identify and address local substance use prevention concerns, including underage drinking and marijuana use and abuse. The program is foundational investment in substance use prevention, and the goals of the proposed initiative include increasing perceptions of harm of regular alcohol and marijuana use among youth and young adults aged 12 to 20 in underserved, underrepresented communities, reducing the onset and progression of alcohol and marijuana use among youth and young adults aged 12 to 20 in underserved communities, promoting individual and community health and wellness to enhance mental health among youth and young adults aged 12 to 20 in underserved communities, and increasing the prevention infrastructure capacity in underserved communities by utilizing the SPF to implement data-driven substance use, misuse prevention, and mental health promotion strategies. The Kansas Department for Aging and Disability Services will utilize the Strategic Prevention Framework to guide prevention planning efforts adherence to the principles in the framework, which increases the likelihood that prevention efforts will focus on the substance use problems impacting the community, produce anticipated outcomes, reduce harmful behaviors, and keep communities healthier and safer. The Kansas Department for Children and Families is extending the application deadline for the 2024 Summer EBT program 
a new federal program that's designed to help eligible families offset some of the cost of buying food for their school-aged children during the summer. Summer EBT, also known as Sunbucks in other states, is a partnership between the Department for Children and Families, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the Food and Nutrition Service, and the Kansas Department of Education. And the program provides families a one-time installment of $120 per each eligible school-aged child to buy groceries over the summer. Applications will be accepted through the Department for Children and Families online self-service portal at DCFAPP. Dot K-E-E-S dot K-S dot gov until 5 p.m. on Tuesday, October 15th. And families will need to use their existing account through the Department for Children and Families self-service portal or create an account to apply. Department for Children and Families Secretary Laura Howard said while summer EBT is intended to help offset the cost of food during summer break, when kids don't have access to the free or reduced price meals they get at school, even with children already back in class, the program can still provide families with a little extra help in putting food on their tables. She said they hope that by extending the application deadline, more families with eligible children will have the opportunity to apply for this year's summer EBT benefit. You can learn more about the summer EBT program by visiting dcf.ks.gov. Developmental Services of Northwest Kansas was recently announced as a recipient of a $5,000 grant from Midwest Energy Incorporated, and this award will be used to purchase three digital chair scales and two Hoyer lifts. The digital chair scales ensures precise weight measurement, enhancing both care and monitoring, and the Hoyer lifts, with an additional battery for each lift, will provide critical support for safe transfers, ensuring safety, portability, and comfort for both individuals and staff, as individuals living in the homes where this equipment is needed have varying degrees of developmental challenges that increase as they age. DSNWK President Ter- Jerry Mashad said many individuals within services are prescribed medications requiring daily weights and monitoring for fluid retention. So this equipment will significantly bolster their capacity to deliver high-quality, efficient, and safe services. This project focuses on the safety for people served within three residential homes in Hayes and those served at the Kobler Developmental Center in Hill City. DSNWK thanks Midwest Energy for the generous support of the people they serve. One person was injured in an accident in Trigo County just before noon on Tuesday, and the Kansas Highway Patrol reported that a 2002 Chevy Tahoe driven by Sage Caroline Hurl, 18 of Hayes, ran a stop sign at 13th and Barclay Avenue in Waukini, and a 2017 Chevy Impala, driven by Madison Elaine Wagoner, 17 of Ellis, then struck the driver's side of the SUV. EMS transported Hurl to the Trigo County Lemke Memorial Hospital, and Wagoner was not injured. Both of the drivers were properly restrained, according to the Kansas Highway Patrol. In Nebraska news, the Inspector General of Nebraska's prison system, Doug Koberneck, released his annual report on Thursday and found that the state's prisons are still plagued by the same problems they faced for years. The inmate population has continued increasing and now is over 5,800, and that's 147 percent of capacity, which means the correctional system is still under an overcrowding emergency. The report notes that some future projects will expand the system's capacity. However, Kobernick said it's unclear what impact they'll have because projections of inmate population growth have been inaccurate. So the Inspector General recommended that the Nebraska Department of Correctional Services updates its population projection to provide much-needed data and insight. Meanwhile, staff vacancies are on the rise again after a brief decline, with the number of vacancies peaking at 527 in 2021, falling to 359 in 2023, and increasing to 452 this June. One of the brighter spots of the report is that turnover is much lower from several years ago, though it has increased slightly in the last couple of years. Staff turnover decreased from 606 in 2021 to 405 in 2022, though it's projected to rise to 448 this year. Kobernick also highlighted the significant overtime costs in the department, an issue raised by State Auditor Mike Foley last month. Foley's audit found that the department spent $21.9 million on overtime in 2023, which is a decrease from previous years. But Kobernick said the number of overtime hours worked by guards has actually increased, and he said that the dis- discrepancy is due to the fact that guards are no longer paid double for overtime. 
The deadline to register to vote in Nebraska is fast approaching. Nebraskans are only a month away from the deadline to register online or by mail to vote in the upcoming election, and Secretary of State Bob Ebnan is working to motivate Nebraska citizens to register to vote, saying voting is a critical part of our democracy, and Nebraskans can make their voices heard by voting in the upcoming November 5th general election. Nebraskans are encouraged to first check whether they are registered to vote in Nebraska on the state's voter check website, and Nebraskans can register to vote by mail at a state agency that includes the DMV, DHHS, or Department of Education, by a deputy registrar, or by a personal agent. Evanen said Nebraskans should be aware of two general election voter registration deadlines. October 18th is the last day to register to vote online, by mail, at a state agency, by deputy registrar, or by personal agent, and October 25th is the last day to register to vote at county election offices. Evnen added that voters should be aware of Nebraska's new voter ID law, which requires to present an acceptable photo ID. I'll be back with more in just a moment. Firebolt Ag is a full-service fertilizer and chemical retailer. They customize products for individual farmers' needs, with the primary focus being customer profitability. Let Josh and Jack help you get the most out of your farm ground. They also provide in-house marketing with Ron Wall of Flatwater Solutions. Visit Ron in Phillipsburg or call Josh at 785-854-8484 or Jack at 308-840-2819. Firebolt Ag, your leader in agriculture. According to the unofficial minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Education for Unified School District 211 that was held on September 9th at 7 p.m., the regular meeting of the Board of Education for USD 211 was called to order by Michael Terry at the Alice Tweed Center, and six members were present, so a quorum was declared. Superintendent Corey Roy let the Board of Education know that there has been a discussion about the JAG-K program possibly being reinstated for the 2025-2026 school year. And Superintendent Roy then discussed the work being done on the scoreboard at Travis Field by 2022 Norton Community High School graduate Jonathan Nielsen. Mr. Roy said he had been working alongside Principal Johnson to get the scoreboard lit up and looking bright again for Friday night lights. Superintendent Roy then let the Board of Education know that Norton Community High School was chosen for the KSHSAA Performing Arts School of Excellence Award, and they were one of 23 schools chosen, with most of the school's 5A or 6A schools. This award is based on excellence in vocal and instrumental music, visual art, and speech and debate. Teresa Schultz presented the first reading of the science curriculum to the Board of Education, and Jeremy Hawks presented the first reading of the fine arts and math curriculums to the Board of Education. Matthew Schick and student FFA board member Stratton McKenna presented information on the National FFA Convention to the Board of Education. They reported that the convention will take place in Indianapolis October 21st through the October 25th. A motion was then made by Jennifer Miller to approve the Norton FFA chapter to go to the National FFA Convention in October. It was seconded by Dina Winty and the motion passed 6-0. The 2024-2025 Activity Handbook was presented to the Board of Education for approval and a motion to approve the 2024-2025 Activity Handbook as presented was made by Jennifer Miller and seconded by John Granberry. The motion carried 6-0. And Principal Keyswetter, Principal Johnson, and Principal Murray then presented the Board of Education with their back-to-school reports. Superintendent Roy let the Board of Education know that the new van has been ordered and it will be here in a couple of weeks, and he also gave an update on what getting some new radios in the near future will look like for the district. After three executive sessions, the Board returned to open meeting at 9.37 p.m., and a motion was made by Dina Winty and seconded by Kate Sprigg to approve the resignations of Alana Murphy as the 5th and 6th grade at-risk teacher, Elena Rodriguez as the high school custodian, Martha Guzman as a high school cook, and Logan Katz as the high school assistant basketball coach. The motion passed 6-0. to zero. A motion was made by Dina Winty and seconded by Jennifer Miller to approve John Hanlon as a .5 custodian and Jason Jones as the assistant high school track coach. The motion carried 6-0. to zero. A motion was made by Dina Winty and seconded by Jennifer Miller to pass the res- reassignment of Michael Hanlon from full-time to .5. The motion carried 6-0. Michael Terry reported that the PDC minutes were ready to be approved by the Board of Education. Jennifer Miller reported on the August 19th NCKSEC board meeting. 
and Dina Winty moved to approve the PDC minutes from August 13th and August 26th as presented. The motion carried 6-0. Michael Terry then adjourned the meeting at 9.40 p.m. A celebration of life for Marlene June Harvey Wilmot, a former resident of Norton, will be held from 1 to 2 p.m. on Friday, September 20th at the Plummer Gobber Funeral Home, and a graveside service will follow in the Norton Cemetery. In lieu of flowers, memorial contributions may be made to the Norton Public Library and sent in care of Plummer Gobber Funeral Home, 215 West Main Street in Norton, and condolences may be left at plummergobber.com. Your menu today for Eisenhower Elementary School. For lunch, you'll have Chicken Supreme, Green Beans, Baby Carrots, Fruit Cocktail, and Milk. For Norton Community High School and Junior High, your lunch today will be Chicken Nuggets or Chef Salad with whipped potatoes and country gravy, fruit, and milk. And for Northern Valley Schools, your lunch today will be Ham Patty, Bun, Potatoes, Vegetable, and Fruit. I'm Natalie Hathaway. Your KQNK News was brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, farmers helping farmers to succeed. You can contact Firebolt Ag today to get the most out of your farmland. Your KQNK weather forecast is being brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, your Norton experts for all of your pest control needs. Your forecast for today, it should be partly sunny, then gradually becoming sunny with a high near 87 and breezy with a south wind of 10 to 20 miles per hour. For tonight, it should be clear with a low around 60 and a southeast wind of 5 to 10 miles per hour. On Thursday, it should be sunny with a high near 87 and a north wind of 5 to 10 miles per hour. And on Thursday night, it should be mostly clear with a low around 56. I'll be back with the rest of your forecast in just a moment. When you've got bugs, we know what a nuisance that can be. Lock them out. From Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, Lock Em Out is our very effective residential insect prevention program. We'll come to your place and treat your foundation plus all insect entryways. And while we're there, receive a free termite inspection. Call Mr. Rich Wenzel, our certified technician in Norton, at 785-202-0167. That's 202-0167. Continuing with your weather forecast, for Friday it should be mostly sunny with a high near 88. On Saturday, there's a chance of showers and thunderstorms, and then showers are likely and possibly a thunderstorm after 1 p.m. Otherwise, it'll be partly sunny with a high near 81, with a chance of precipitation of 60%. On Sunday, there's a 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Otherwise, it'll be partly sunny with a high near 67. On Monday, it should be mostly sunny with a high near 72 and on Tuesday, mostly sunny with a high near 72. Currently, with mostly cloudy skies, it is 63 degrees. The humidity is 88%. The wind speed is south at 9 miles per hour. The barometric pressure is 29.87, and the dew point is 59 degrees. Your weather was brought to you by by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control right here in Norton. You can call Hinkle Termite and Pest Control at 785 202-0167 for all of your pest control needs. It is 823. It's time for Kansas Sports. That's being brought to you by United Northwest Federal Credit Union, where everything they do, they do for you. Save more, earn more with the Easy Saver account at the United Northwest Federal Credit Union. Enrollment in this program automatically rounds up the amount of all debit card and share draft purchases made from your checking account to the next whole dollar and deposits into the Easy Saver savings account. Not only will this account help you save, but it also earns 2.01% APY monthly. Special terms and conditions apply. Come in today and open your Easy Saver account at the United Northwest Federal Credit Union, where everything we do, we do for you. NCUA insured. KIN Sports, I'm Spencer Dupuy. Kansas State head football coach Chris Kleiman spoke to the media earlier this week and he talked about how offensive coordinator Connor Riley has been able to open up the playbook as weeks go by. We kind of made a point to be more aggressive this week and I think we were. We also just, we played a little bit better and, you know, there's a lot to continuity up front and um, even though we had some guys that had played some, we hadn't had a lot of guys that played together as much and so that was good to see. I think Riles did some really good things with Avery and getting him on the edge and, and creating some issues on defense. 
defense and then uh, throwing the ball a little bit on first down and then being able to stay on the field on third down you know that that's calls and and Rouse will tell you the same thing that's protection and execution and we executed a couple really nice times on third down and critical we had a uh, kind of a crossing dig route to, to Keegan that was a huge play at, at a time and then Avery scrambled out and Jace did a great job of finding a, a, a hole in there and those two have great chemistry anyway and he caught it made it a 40 yard gain so you know we have to be able to make some explosive plays and we were able to do that via the run and pass Kansas Information Network Sports I'm Spencer Dupuis Growing wheat can be a rewarding experience, but it also comes with its fair share of challenges. Imagine having the power to see blockages on your seeder before they happen and consistently apply the correct rate and flow on your seeder and sprayer while seeing the data you need in real time. That's exactly what upgrades from Precision Planning offer you. Let's start with seeding. How do you know if you're applying the right rate on each row? Standard blockage systems often fall short, only showing red or green for product flow. The Clarity System from Precision Planting is a simple upgrade that maps magnitude row by row on the 2020 monitor, alerting you of variances in rate and flow in real time. Now let's talk spraying. Adding Symphony Nozzle to your sprayer gains you independent control of rate and pressure, ensuring a consistent droplet size. This means reduced overlap and wasted product, saving you time and money. For your best wheat or other small grain season yet, upgrade your equipment with Clarity and Symphony Nozzle from Precision Planting. Visit precisionplanting.com to find a local precision planting premier dealer near you. It's true, many of us spend more time thinking about what's for dinner than preparing for retirement. But if you think your retirement needs deserve more attention, I agree, and I'd like to help. I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Philip Eisenhagen. Together we can give your long-term retirement strategy the attention it deserves. Stop by our office at 418 East Holm here in Norton or call 877-3373. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC.